let's come to your most recent report where you say India's stealth game changer. You say much like the proverbial frog that fails to notice a slow increase in the temperature of water in the vessel, markets do at times fail to notice incremental changes. What's that big incremental change? You focused on energy. I want you both to explain. You've talked about oil out of the US and coal out of China. Right. And first, if you could explain that, and then we'll get into the implications of what you say that could have on India. So we are constantly tracking what's happening in the world. We are discussing stuff with our emerging market team members. And what we noticed was there were two important things which were happening in the world. One was U.S. shale oil and gas. And the second was uh, changes that were happening in China with the new policy, uh, with the new administration coming in. And, and we tried to connect the dots here and see what are the implications of changes happening in the U.S. and in China for India. And, and what we realized is that the shale oil revolution – uh, which will lead to U.S. becoming far more self-sufficient in its consumption of oil, mm. and the focus in China on pollution, which could result in lower coal consumption, could be two important drivers which could, in a stealth way, help India. Mm. So, so the two, the two uh, big contributors, so, so, so U.S. is 20% of global oil consumption, and China is 49% of global coal consumption. Mm. And if these two... Uh, big players uh, start making some policy changes or see some technological changes, it has big, big implications for the rest of the world and, of course, for India. Are you into astrology or something? Because I think while you were writing this, that's exactly <laughs> what was happening. Uh, that was fortuitous, I would say. Yeah. Uh, what we were putting out here is, is fundamental trends that we are seeing in both these markets. And we have specific reasons to think that coal and oil prices should remain within a certain range with a downward bias over the medium term. And these were the arguments that we were putting out. Mm. Uh, and sometimes sometimes years happen in weeks. So uh, what was supposed to happen maybe over a medium term has happened very quickly. And in that sense, it was fortuitous. But the trends are unmistakable. I think the fundamentals are clearly there for everyone to see. Uh, just to give a stat, um, I mentioned about the shale revolution in the U.S., uh, about seven years ago, U.S. was only 69% self-sufficient for its oil and petroleum needs. Within seven years, it's 80% self-sufficient, which basically means that the largest consumer of oil is now going to demand less and less from the external world, mm -hmm. which has implications for prices. Obviously, mm -hmm. that the largest consumer is now no longer as dominant as it used to be. And same for China, that there are pollution norms which will probably get implemented. Uh, pollution is a big top-of-the-mind issue for the policymakers over there. Uh, we put some stats from uh, NASA as well as from the World Health Organization, which says that Chinese urban landscape or Chinese cities are some of the most polluted cities anywhere in the world, and there is an immediate need to control that, uh, control that pollution. And disincentives for coal burning will be one of them. Uh, so we think that dynamic in China, the shale revolution in the U.S., both will have kind of pricing... Uh, implications for oil and coal, which are good for India mm. over the medium term. Can you explain? You do write, uh, you talk about what does all this mean for India. You say India's economic susceptibility to the problems of the widening twin deficits, the CAD and the fiscal deficit, and a lot of this could change if yeah. these events yeah. were to happen. So, so oil and coal uh, automatically address, and maybe address is the wrong word, automatically help mm. uh, the three major macro problems you're facing. It helps the current account deficit, it helps the fiscal deficit, and it helps inflation, right? So in a sense, the three macro problems that India has been dealing with or grappling with are, uh, are, are helped uh, with, as a result of lower oil and coal prices. Uh, so let's quickly look at the math, right? So in this year, we'll end up with a current account deficit for fiscal March 2013 with a current account deficit of about 5.1%. Uh, if you look at the net oil imports, that itself contributes about 6.6% of GDP, mm. and the coal imports, net coal imports, is about 0.9% uh, of GDP. So the two put together is 7.5% of GDP, which is, which is quite significant. Mm. And, and we think that as oil and coal prices start coming off, it's going to make a very uh, meaningful impact. So if you want me to quantify a bit more, I'd say uh, every $10 uh, per barrel fall in oil prices is, has an impact on the current account deficit of $10 billion dollars. Right, and similarly for coal, uh, as coal falls from say $87, Newcastle prices uh, comes down further. That can again have 
uh, a, a similar important implication on the current account deficit. Mm -hmm. so, so these numbers are meaningful, and these numbers can make a big change. So we're looking at about a $90 billion current account deficit this year, March 2013, again, when I mean this year, I mean the year just ended. Mm -hmm. and, and that could change by pretty significant amounts if the oil and coal prices were to continue to remain low. And that could be, as you write, lower energy prices could be India's silver bullet. Yes, yes. And that's something, according to you, while we are focusing on all the other things, right. this is silently happening. Right. So, so while we're focusing on reforms, while we're trying to say what are policymakers doing, we're trying to say what's going to happen in the next RBI meet, we're trying to figure out when are central elections going to happen, is it end of this year, is it first quarter next year. So while, all, while we're obsessed about all these things, while we're focused on all these things, we're saying, at, at, the, at the side, we are seeing these stealth changes, mm -hmm. which are very meaningful. And therefore, have you turned more bullish on the markets? Yes. So, uh, we are turning slightly more constructive on the markets based mm -hmm. on the macro arguments that we are making. Mm -hmm. So, as Amai mentioned, the three top-of-the-mind macro issues that we were grappling with for most part of uh, the last year were inflation and the twin deficit, mm -hmm. current account deficit and fiscal deficit. The word silver bullet is used because this is one factor uh, which is kind of addressing all three in one go. The current account deficit through the trade deficit channel, the fiscal deficit through lower under recoveries and hence a boost for the fisc, and the inflation because of the pass through of lower oil prices into the WBI inflation. Mm. So all these three macro worries which were top of the mind are in a way getting eased out at the margin. But here I need to emphasize the point that this is a change at the margin. So. Amai mentions the $90 billion current account deficit number for FY13, and that could go down to whatever, 70 or whatever that number is based on the math that he just mentioned. But $70 billion is still a large absolute number that needs to be funded through capital flows. Mm. Uh, so, so this is like you're slogging for an exam the night before, and you're suddenly told that your exam is postponed by two weeks. Mm. The natural tendency is to relax and relax in a big way. Uh, but we need to guard against that. So. We are kind of getting a breather here, but that's not the solution in entirety uh, for the problem. So what's the solution? Well, like the finance minister said in his budget speech, that investment is an act of faith, hmm. right? So, so as a country, we should continue to maintain a framework that attracts investments, uh, that attracts portfolio flows, FDI, and we've seen a pretty significant increase in uh, the, the capital flows from debt capital as well. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to have a framework that continues to welcome investments in all form. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because, so like, like Swanan mentioned, uh, so the current account deficit will come down, but we can't relax on the capital flows that, need to be, need, that are required mm -hmm. to fund the current account deficit.